Ready to kick it off for the Bison, Umar Moore, the junior out of Washington, PA. And here he comes. And we are underway here at DeSanto Field. Case with the football first, getting it on the reception. Brendan Lynch on the kickoff return. Angles out to the far right side, outside the numbers across the 40, out across midfield. And a great return for Lynch. Gets the Spartans in great field position for their first drive of the ball game. That is exactly what they wanted to do coming right out of the gates. And now uh, because they've got to go into the wind early, it's important for them to try to get points on the board here, especially when you get a return like that. Very nicely done. Brendan Lynch, the sophomore out of Sarver, PA. Latest high school ball at Freeport Area High School. First play from scrimmage tonight for the Spartans. The lights are on here at DeSanto Field. It'll be a while before they take full effect, but a night game against the Bison. First meeting between these teams since 1983. Billy Beecher lofts it to the left side, caught by Lynch. And he is across the 45, down close to the 42-yard line, a pickup of six, and I'd say Brendan Lynch has been a factor so far. <laughs> a kick return and a catch. Sounds good to me. Let's take a look at the starting offensive line up front from left to right. Ryan Merlau, the freshman, will be at left tackle. Left guard is junior Sean Carson. Freshman Gage Blair is the uh, center on the offensive line. Captain Sam Reeser is the right guard. He's a senior, and the senior right tackle is Joe Brucker. Billy Beecher calls out the signals. He has Bianco on his right. Hockman is in, the lead blocker on the right side. They'll flip it toward the middle of the field. Caught wide open for the catch. And again, I believe that's Brendan Lynch hauling it in. His second catch. It's good for a first down as the football is spotted at the 27-yard line. That's a pickup of 16. Racking up the all-purpose yards here early on. You'll see Lynch, Dan Cronin, Luke DeFrancesco, Colin McLeod all at wide receiver. Tight ends today, George Duraney and Zach Medved. Anthony Biacco and uh, Manny Secre are the running backs. Adam Hockman will play fullback. Well, Medved had a big touchdown reception last week against Teal. They'll keep it on the ground. Bianco's first carry of the evening powers his way past the 25 before he is finally wrapped up and tackled. Bianco coming into the game today, the leading rusher for the Spartans with 137 total yards in three games and averaging just under 46 yards per game. Now the Bison defensive front, they'll attack you with a 4-3 defense. You talked about Nadim Radar, the defensive end, who has uh, fourth, in the, uh, fourth in the country in sacks with seven already on the year. Beecher, a quick strike out to the far side to deep francesco breaks a tackle gets across the 10 and case knocking on the door De francesco's 13th catch of the year that's tops on the team and case will have it first and goal from the eight yard line nick greer eric campbell khalid pierce the other three defensive linemen strong side linebacker is larry potier middle linebacker dylan stewart donovan hayden the weak side backer Shannon Scott, Aaron Fry, Deion Williams, and Wismi Despain are the defensive backs. Well, Bianco is tripped up quickly here. Case tried just a quick uh, running play right up the middle to see what was shaking. It goes for a one-yard loss. You mentioned Paudier, the linebacker out of Monrovia, Maryland. He had an interception last week to seal that win against Waynesburg for Bethany. Billy Beecher. Glances over to the sideline. Offset eye in the backfield. Now Beecher fires it to the end zone. Leaping grab by Lynch. Touchdown, Spartans. Nine-yard touchdown pass. Lynch with three grabs on the drive. And Case has the early 6 to nothing lead with 12.02 to go here in the first quarter. Wow. What a statement early on. Got a great kick return all the way onto the Bethany side of the field. I don't think they had a negative play the whole drive, and they just marched it right in. We haven't even had three minutes of game time up, and, and Bethany right now has to go over to the sideline and say, okay, these guys are here to play today. Let's do it. Lynch with his first touchdown catch of the season. Here is the PAT. It is on its way. It is up, and it is good. That one kicked through by Ben Carniol, the freshman out of Vienna, Virginia. 
Case up seven to nothing. Bethany Ball after we pause for this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Case leading it by a score of seven to nothing as they get ready to kick off for the first time this evening. A Brendan Lynch nine-yard touchdown reception from Billy Beecher as the Spartans strike very quickly on their first drive. Beecher with his seventh touchdown pass of the season. Back deep to receive for the Bison. Eric Blinn and Chris Collins. And a short kick. And that is going to be taken on a diving catch out to near the 27-yard line, hauled in by Dominic Jefferson, the junior, who had to come over and make that grab, laying out for it. A very quick drive, Brendan, and the Spartans very efficient. Yeah, they uh, they went right up the field very quickly, only took 258 off the clock, a six-play, 48-yard drive that featured more Brendan Lynch than anyone else. <laughs> and it was all set up by that great kickoff return by Lynch. And here we go, Bethany's first play from scrimmage. They keep it on the ground, a quick tackle in there by K.J. Peterson as Brandon Hill got the first carry of the evening for Bethany. Hill is their primary ball carrier, the 5'9 senior out of McKeesport, PA. Now to Blinn as they swing it out. Blinn, fine wide receiver and he gets a lot of yardage after the catch, Brendan, and that's a first down for the Bison. You know, this Bethany team is a team that takes a lot of pride in running the ball. In week one against Mount Union, they had 35 carries for just 75 yards. Since then, in the next three weeks, averaging 46 carries for almost 200 yards a week as a squad, and they've got three different guys that will do it. This is a direct snap to Eric Blinn, and he makes for the sideline, gets out of bounds. At about the 43-yard line, a pickup of one. Second down and nine. We have 11-15 to go here in the first quarter. Case up 7 to nothing here at DeSanto Field. So now their regular quarterback, Brian Vales, checks in. He'll swing it out quickly. Pass caught, but a quick tackle. Grab was made by Chris Collins, the senior out of Youngstown, Ursuline but quickly tackled, and we'll see if it's going to go down as an incomplete pass. You know, the referee on the far side of the field quickly waved incomplete, but the ball marker seems to be uh, ahead of where I expected. Well, they still have third and nine football on the 43-yard line. They are double-checking now. I think uh, they're saying that was an incomplete pass. Real quick, the starting offensive line for the Bison from left to right, Bo Burtis, Alex Varakis, Tim Walters, Terrell Carter, and Ethan Barnes on the Bison line. They're on the right side, both standing 6-4. Little screen pass taken by Hill, makes for midfield, out across the numbers on the left. And he is hit and stopped right about the 50-yard line. It is going to be short of the first down. And so fourth and about three coming up, and the Bison will have to punt this one away. Ten thirty-four to go and counting with Case up by a score of seven to nothing. They're ready to punt this one away, and there it goes. And Case will get it on a running start at the twenty, out to the twenty-five yard line. That's as far as they get. That was Cronin bringing it back. Dan Cronin, the junior wide receiver out of Palos Heights, Illinois. Spartans defense holds a nice job, and. Uh, we saw Bethany with a, a little bit of a, a wrinkle in their offense, snapping it straight to their fine wide out. Eric Blinn, but the Spartans able to hold him. Well, at the end of the day, you just take it one possession at a time. And, you know, Bethany with what is kind of a vaunted offense, you look at that and say, okay, well, you know, didn't pick up the first down on the first, uh, or rather had to punt it away on their first offensive possession, but 
Still so early in the game, there's no reason to try to do anything silly. Well, Spartans took it right at him in the first drive and scored 7 to nothing. Billy Beecher back to throw it, picked off and dropped. And, boy, that was going to be a pick six. Wismy to Spain stepping right in front there, Brendan, and he was going to take it to the house, but didn't have the full handle on the football. He could have moonwalked into the end zone. He had nothing in front of him. And uh, you can just see on the body language just clear frustration. It was a ball that caught a little bit of wind and was underthrown. And Despain had six written all over it. Very fortunate for Case. Case is working into the wind on this drive here in the first quarter. And a pitch back is on the ground. It's a fumble. Who's going to get it? They pile up over on the far side. Still not sure who fell on it. It's back behind the 15-yard line. And looks like Case was able to cover it. And for the second straight play, the Spartans catch a lucky break. Yeah, Hockman was the one to finally pounce on top of the football. Beecher went over there, and it's always good to see your quarterback go over there aggressively. Usually, you don't want to see your quarterback be put in harm's way, but I think uh, Billy said, hey, I'm not going to be the guy that lets, lets Bethany take it over on the 15-yard line. He dove in and actually kind of created a little bit of wiggle room for Hockman to get in there and get the football. Well, he fell on it at the 16-yard line. It's now a third and 20 for the Spartans. We've played five and a half minutes of the first quarter. Beecher wants to run it. And he has some room straight up the middle. Gets out across the 20 to the 25 and knocked down at about the 28-yard line. He picks up close to 12, but Spartans will be still about eight yards short of the first down. Case will punt, and one of the Bison's uh, players injured back uh, near the 15-yard line. Did you catch a number there, Brendan? I did. That strong side linebacker, Larry Potier, who is down and in very... Uh, very obvious pain. He is laying on his right side and not really moving his right arm very well. So Potier, who you, we just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, a very key player on this, uh, on this Bison defensive unit. Hopefully, for his sake, hopefully he's okay. Potier is sitting now, and uh, they're continuing to take a look at him. He is their leading tackler with 42 on the season, six of those for a loss. Two quarterback sacks, one interception, two pass breakups on the season. And there you see him for our viewers uh, watching. He is jogging off the field uh, under his own power. And so that's a good sign if you're Bill Garvey and his coaching staff. Yeah, maybe he just got the wind knocked out of him. He kind of tucked his arms into his gut that made you think maybe he couldn't breathe very well. Adrian Cannon will prepare to pump this one away on fourth and eight. Case on their own 28-yard line. There's the snap back to Cannon. It's low. They don't come after it, and he booms one back close to the 35-yard line. It's caught back there by Eric Blinn. Now he turns back upfield outside the numbers, far on the left, and steps out of bounds at uh, about the 46-yard line. That's where Bethany will take over. They have good field position starting in their own territory, but all the way up at the 46. Well, I think you're getting an early glimpse as to why Blinn is the guy who, when they run a Wildcat, he's the one that takes a direct snap because he's very athletic. And you could tell by the way he looked to the right and kept his vision upfield, realized there wasn't anything there, and then reversed the play back to the left-hand side. When you got a guy with that kind of athleticism and vision, you're going to want to get him the ball in open space, no doubt. It was a 37-yard punt and 11-yard return by Blinn. Brandon Hill gets the handoff, makes for the left side, tries to break over the left tackle, but he's caught from behind. Nice shoestring tackle by Tyler Hamilton, the junior defensive end out of Wyandotte, Michigan, who had one of four case interceptions last week. No huddle offense for the Bison. Now Vales to throw it. That one's almost picked off by Everett DeShong. He breaks it up. And it falls incomplete. And yeah, Deshaun back in the starting lineup this week. Up front for the Spartans, Josh Rogers, Rocky Trigiano, and Dayton Snyder. The four linebackers, Deshaun, Gavin Sandage, Aaron Weisberg, and K.J. Peterson with Mike O'Donnell, Jordan Esteban, Scott Surin, and Nick Kwan in the secondary. Deshaun coming back uh, this week after a concussion a couple weeks ago, played sparingly last week, but back at full go here this week. Vails. Looking over toward the sideline, it is third down and nine for the Bison. Seven to nothing case, 8.23 to go. First quarter, Vales back to throw. Runs to his right, chased out of the pocket, fires it for Hill. It's incomplete. 
out near midfield. There defensively for Case, K.J. Peterson. That'll bring up fourth down and a three and out this time for the Bison. Case will get the ball back, leading at seven to nothing. Case has come out with good energy today, Dave. I mean, this has been a, a really good, uh, good first quarter for them so far on both sides of the football. Very impressive. Well, and Case uh, sort of dodging the bullet on a couple of plays on the almost uh, interception and the fumble that was recovered by the Spartans. Here's the punt and a good one all the way back to the seven-yard line. Cronin has it and good punt coverage by the Bison. They'll tackle Cronin deep in Case territory. That was a nice punt boomed back there by Stefan Amick, the senior out of McDonald, PA. Well, this is already the start of our fifth possession of the game. Three punts and a touchdown. We've only ticked away just under seven minutes. It's uh, with, with the exception of that opening drive, neither offense has really gotten much going. Okay, so we'll have to work the ball up the field. They start at their own 11-yard line. Billy Beecher comes back out at quarterback. I'll give you some of Beecher's numbers as we move along. Coming into this game, very impressive. 61% completion percentage for Billy Beecher, the senior quarterback out of Palmyra, PA. Here is the snap. They'll go to Bianco straight up the middle and dives across the 15-yard line. So a pickup of four. Second down and six for Case. They lead it seven to nothing here. First quarter action on a chilly night at DeSanto Field. Bianco again straight ahead. And powers his way out close to the 19-yard line. By the way, we mentioned earlier, Bethany, you know, unblemished since that week one loss to Mount Union. Did you see what Mount Union did today? I did not. They beat Capital 75 to nothing. It was 72 nothing at the end of the third quarter. Running clock, fourth uh, quarter, maybe? Yeah, you know, it's not the OHSA, but it, it should have been. <laughs> Hotman tries a diving catch, uh, falling backward. The pass incomplete. Fourth down for Case as they tried to swing a little screen pass out to the left. Spartans will have to punt. And Bethany will get the ball back and, again, should get it in good field position. Yeah, anytime you can get a, a punt with this kind of a stiff wind, anytime you can get decent distance here, that is certainly going to play to your advantage. And obviously we saw Adrian Cannon really lean into one the last time out. He's going to have to get a good one here too because you got two pretty dangerous returners at the other end. Glenn and Carter waiting at uh, midfield. Here is the kick, and he kept, keeps it low and gets some good distance on that. It's taken by Chris Collins. Collins back across the far side, outside the numbers, is finally dropped, and again, good Coverage by Case coming over to prevent any kind of a return. George Duraney and Adam Hockman both getting down there on the punt coverage and helping to wipe Collins out. Well, Bethany racked up 495 yards of total offense last week. So they are capable of moving the football and doing so well. well I'm not sure. Did we have a flag here? It looks like there was a flag. And so... Uh, I did not catch the call, but this one is being marked off all the way back to the 25-yard line. It must be a 15-yard penalty because the ball was up near the yeah. 42 or 43. A personal foul call against Bethany, and so the good field position turns into so-so field position at the 25-yard line. Bison will start out in their own territory. Now the sun peaks out here. And so quite chilly, but sunny right now with the lights on here at DeSanto Field. And the whistle blows and stops that play. And it looks like uh, another five will be walked off against the Bison. Well, Bethany's got to be careful not to dig themselves too deep a hole here. Case really outplaying them here in the beginning of the first quarter. 20 yards of penalties before they get this drive underway. They will keep it on the ground. Hill carrying it. Ball comes loose. Case thinks they have it, and they say no. Ball carrier was down. Case with a big hit, jarred the ball loose, but Bethany will keep possession. They'll get uh, back into that no huddle. 
Checking in at running back is Jalen Holmes. They fake a handoff to him. They swing it out to the far side. Pass caught out there. Gets outside the hash marks. And then out near the numbers. Pass was caught by Miguel Torado. Scott Surin in on the stop. He made the initial hit. Owen Williams helped finish him off. Second down. Make it now third down. And they pick up some of that uh, penalty yardage. They're looking at a third and 10. The football is marked at the 25-yard line. Bales calls out the signal in the shotgun, drops back to throw, looks left, fires it, passes, caught, and it's good for a first down out near the 40-yard line. Hauling it in again, Torado, the sophomore, back-to-back -back catches. Torado, 5'9", 170. Well, coming into today's game, Torado had just four catches on the season. They'll go to home straight up the middle, dives ahead, picks up five hard-earned yards, second down and five. So Torado with two catches on this drive and up to six for the year. Six minutes to go, first quarter, seven to nothing case. Holmes again gets the carry, tries to bounce to the outside, and he's knocked down by Aaron Weisberg of the Spartans. So a short gain there and a big third down play coming up. Great play by Weisberg. He just kind of read the backfield and shuffled his feet from left to right across that line of scrimmage. Never got caught up in trying to go toward the line. Sniffed it out quickly. Nicely done. Back to throw Bales. He will fire it out. Caught coming out of the backfield by Hill. He's finally wrestled to the ground by Quan of the Spartans. And this one will be very close to a first down. It looks like the uh, linesman is saying to move the chains. So they pick up exactly what they needed, about a four-yard gain on that swing pass out to the right. And a new set of plays for the Bison. So after a couple of early penalties, they've got the ball going the right way. And again, they will keep it on the ground. Hill carrying it. Brandon Hill, a 5'9", 190-pound senior. Yeah, and if you're Bethany, you just got to go back to what you do well right now. It hasn't been a good start to the game for them, really on either side of the ball. Until this drive, they only had one first down. They just got to try to go back to what they do well and run the football. Hill will carry it, looking for a hole to open, and it does. He gets across the 40-yard line before he is tripped up, down close to the 39. Another first down run by Hill. It's their third first down of the drive. They had a personal foul call and a procedure penalty before they got the first snap off, and now they have the ball moving. And again, Hill straight up the middle, but he is hit and knocked down. Hamilton in there on the stop. So got some help on the inside on that tackle by Dayton Snyder. We called Dayton's name a lot last week in that win against Teal. Vail. Looks to throw. Now he looks to run. He is going to be hit. Gets a hold on that football. Spartans were, were trying to rip it out of his hands. And he gets across the 35-yard line. And right there, making something out of nothing, Brendan, Everett DeShong was finally able to bring him down. Oh, well, that's what Vales is pretty good at doing. Obviously a guy who can throw the ball well, but can't discount him in the run game. Vales back to throw and a lot of protection. Now he angles out to the left, looking downfield, but he'll tuck it and run across the 30, 25, 20, and out of bounds. Huge block by Miguel Tirado on the outside. The sophomore wideout who held off Nick Kwan just long enough to allow Vales to pick up what ended up being an extra seven yards. 15 yards and a first down on the quarterback run. Now Hill straight up the middle. He's close to the goal line, and he is in for a touchdown. 17 yards straight up the middle for Brandon Hill. Hill's third rushing touchdown of the season. And Bethany an extra point away from tying this one up. 3.28 to go here in the first quarter. Place kicker is Umar Moore. And the holder is Eric Blinn. There's the snap and the hold. Kick is up, and it is good. We are tied 7-7 as the Bison march down the field and tie things up. 3.28 to go in the first quarter. 
Back with more from DeSanto Field after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high-quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world-class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Well, 328 to go in the first quarter, and we are tied at seven. The Bison answer with an impressive drive and made even more impressive, Brendan, by the fact that they went backwards on the first two plays, losing 20 yards and penalties, but then they really showed a quick strike capability. And yeah, they just basically ran the ball most of the way up the field. It was a 12-play 57-yard drive technically, but it essentially was 77 yards. Cronin from the 5, out across the 20, out to the 25, 30, and across the 30 before he's finally knocked down. And Case gets a nice return by Dan Cronin, who uh, took it back about 28 yards out to the 33-yard line. That's where Case will take over. Spartans and Bison meeting for the first time since 1983. And we are tied at 7, 3.20 to go here in the opening quarter on an unusually bright evening now here at DeSanto Field. Lights are on, sun shining bright over some of the dormitories here at Case Western Reserve. Billy Beecher fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Not a lot of running room on the right. Out about uh, two more yards, close to the 35-yard line. A long second down is coming up. You know, the key, what you said, was he fakes the handoff, and the fake handoff went to Sean Lapsevic, who is in the slot on the right. Good to see him in the ball game. He'll get it on a jet sweep. No, they fake it again, and Beecher keeps it and steps out of bounds. Lapsevic gets tripped up at the last second as well, trying to throw a block for Billy Beecher. So Sean Lapsevic, the senior, out of Presto, PA, is in the ball game, playing through a high ankle sprain that kept him out of practice most of the week. Three receivers on the right. One on the left, that's Brendan Lynch, who had a big impact on that early scoring drive for the Spartans. Beecher in the shotgun with Bianco to his left. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the right. Now Beecher drops back, looks to throw, guns it for Lynch, incomplete. There was a bump back there, but no flag on the defensive coverage by Wismy to Spain. That'll bring up fourth down, fourth and six for the Spartans from their own 37-yard line, and Adrian Cannon back out to punt. 7-7 Seven -seven ball game. Eric Blen will drop back deep for Bethany. He's at to his own 30. Line of scrimmage is the case 37. Cannon awaiting the long snap from Zach Lowe. There is the snap, and Cannon hits it away, shanks it to the right. That's going to take a Bethany bounce after hitting at about the 45-yard line. Spartans will down it at the 49. So Bethany will start in their own territory, but by only one yard, that turns out to be a 14-yard kick. It's been kind of a... Tale of two halves of the first quarter. You know, Case went down the field right away, opened up with a nice drive. You know, you almost wonder when when you get a chance at the start of a game, your first drive, how much of that is, you know, just what you did all week in preparation, and, and how much of that can you attribute to how the rest of the game is going to go? You know, maybe the Spartans saw something specific they wanted to attack in Bethany on film all week, and they obviously did uh, in that first drive down the field, but in the, the couple of drives since then, not quite as successful. Well, and you know that the uh, Bethany coaches up top made adjustments after that first drive as well. They're in the Wildcat. Eric Blen gets a direct snap and drives over the left side out across the numbers and gets to midfield. It uh, goes for a pickup of all of one yard. And now Vales comes back in. 
Boy, I left the sunglasses in the I car, was Brendan. The same thing, you know. It, with the, the thick, dark, heavy clouds, I didn't think that was going to be a problem today. Holmes gets it straight up the middle, shakes a tackler. Now he's back into the defensive secondary. He's finally wrestled down as he gets across the case 31-yard line. They finally wrestle him down at the 28, and they are working that no huddle. Case trying to match up defensively. Ben gets, uh, Blend gets a swing pass and out works across the field to the right, out across the numbers, tries to stay in bounds as he gets out across the 20-yard line and steps out of bounds close to the 17. That's going to go for a first down and a pickup of about 11 yards. A blend running laterally until he could find an opening. Fails with the snap, goes to the left, and it is a diving catch by Blinn inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line, a pickup of four. Well, Case better like the unit they have out on the field defensively right now because there is no time to put a sub in. This is the epitome of the hurry-up. Second down and six, keeping it bails across the 10, out to the 7-yard line before he is hit and knocked down. They're defensively for Case. Jordan Esteban finally finished him off. Third down and one. Vales ended up just a yard short of the first down marker. Ball is on the eighth. They'll ask Holmes to get the first down. He does as he drives straight ahead. Got a nice block by Alex Varikas, the junior offensive lineman out of Carnegie, PA. First end goal from the six. They do not slow it down. Holmes gets the handoff inside the five. He was slowed down, but uh, not tackled until he drives across the five and down close now to the three yard line. Second and goal. Holmes again gets it. Left side tries to dive for the goal line. Case kept him out. Looks like he picks up two. And Brendan, they'll be on the one-yard line. <laughs> I mean, we're talking seven, eight seconds between tackle and snap of the next play. Right now, just seven seconds left in the first quarter. And it doesn't look like Bales. Well, now he does. They get the snap off. Final play of the first quarter. They give it to Hill. He's close. There's the signal. It's a touchdown. One-yard run for Brandon Hill. Bethany jumps on top, 13-7 to as the first quarter comes to an end. They will kick the PAT before the quarter break. But uh, moving the ball very quickly. Chris Ray is out, I believe, to try the extra point. It is no good off the crossbar. Chris Ray misfires. They'll settle for six. It is 13 to 13-7. That's the end of the first quarter here at DeSanto Field. Bethany 13, K7. Case ball when we come back after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. David Wilson, Brendan Gulick back here at DeSanto Field. Mike Becker, our producer up top. Shayna Perlman, Jaime Vidal on camera. Great to have all of you with us for our coverage of Case Western Reserve football. We welcome all of the Bethany fans uh, tuning in as well, enjoying the video coverage of tonight's pack matchup between the Bison and and the Spartans, 13-7. to seven. Bethany leading it, and this offensive approach by the Bison, Brendan, very impressive. Uh, they waste less than no time <laughs> between plays. I mean, they get up there and just run the next one as quickly as they can. Lynch at the 10 on the kickoff return, right up the left hash. Now angles to the middle of the field, across the 30, still on his feet, bounces to the outside. Gets across the 40 to the 45-yard line. He'll finally be wrapped up and dropped near the 48-yard line, a 38-yard return by Brendan Lynch. He does it again. He does it again indeed. A couple thoughts here. I wanted to finish up the last one. First of all, it was a nine-play, 51-yard drive. 
they ran nine plays in two minutes and 16 seconds. I mean, that by itself is, is borderline crazy. And, and I think Case probably isn't bothered by the fact that Bethany scored a, right before the quarter break because then Bethany had to kick in the wind. It was not a particularly great kick, and then Lynch with the nice runoff. They get the ball at their own 48-yard line. Great field position to start this drive. First and 10 for the Spartans, trailing it by six. 14.49 to go, second quarter. Case operating in its own territory. They'll hand this ball up the middle. I believe that's Manny Secre getting his first carry of the evening. We'll see when they untangle the pile. I'm not sure if that was Manny or not. Let's see. Looks like it was Anthony Canganelli who's in there at uh, running back right now. They will swing it out. Pass is caught by De Francesco across midfield to the 45, down to the 47-yard line before he is tackled. And getting in there on the tackle is the uh, big defensive end, Nadeem Radar, 5'11", 260 out of Laurel, Maryland. But he has recorded seven sacks on the season. Case 0 for 3 on third downs here in the afternoon. We've got a third and one here. Very important third down. Case down by 6, 13 to 7. Under, or just over a minute gone by here in the second quarter. Here's Beecher. Beecher in trouble. He'll be knocked down in the backfield. A little miscommunication there by Case. Coming in to make the defensive play. Donovan Hayden, the junior, out of Hyattsville, Maryland, comes up to wipe out Beecher on the sack. And Case looking at a fourth down. They lost four yards on the play. And Adrian Cannon will be out to try the punt. And the Bison will get it back. Eric Blinn stationed out near his own 15. Well, miscommunication, the key word there. Case probably had enough push at the line of scrimmage, but Beecher was looking for someone to hand it off to, and nobody was there. There's a whistle. Somebody jumped on the line, I believe, as that uh, snap came back. Let's see. That could give Case a first down, but it's against the Spartans. Well, Spartans had two very close calls in their second drive, nearly throwing a pick six and then almost losing a fumble. Now Cannon. With five extra yards, he has to try and make up. Blinn makes the catch on the punt at about the 12, out to the 20-yard line. He is hit and tackled. Adam Hockman again there defensively for the Spartans. Got some help from Owen Williams as well. And the Spartans' defense will come back out on the field, and I would imagine coming out with a little bit of trepidation after what they saw at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, they got to figure out a way when they were on the sidelines to, to adjust to this high tempo offense. I don't know how Bethany truthfully is able to get off so many plays in such little time. I mean, it must be, you know, with the way they've run the ball, it must be just kind of a, a, you know, read the defense and see who's lined up where and run something that they think will counter that. Brian Bales is the quarterback. He'll swing it out to Blinn, out near the numbers. Now angles back to the right and is tackled as he dives across the 25, out close to the 28-yard line. Gavin Sandage and Dayton Snyder there defensively for the Spartans. Also getting some help from K.J. Peterson, 12.39 to go, second quarter. The snap back to Vales. They'll go to Hill, straight up the hash mark on the left. Has some good running room, good for a first down. Finally tackled by Scott Surin, out near the 39-yard line. And this is almost like the D3 basketball team Grinnell that will shoot threes all day. And if they get behind you on defense, they'll just let you lay it up and they'll try to beat you 160 to 140. <laughs> well, they handed a hill again. And I believe you're right. You touched on it earlier. It's almost as if uh, Vales just kind of glances over the sideline. And, and right now, they're taking as much time as we've seen them take all night. Seriously, I mean, we're talking, you know, there might be 15 seconds between snaps here. But certainly no huddle. Vails back to throw on second and 10 to the sideline. Pass is caught. Collins makes the grab. Was he out of bounds? They say he was. Well, that went through about three Spartans. Caught by Collins, but thankfully for the Spartans, he was out of bounds. You know, I was thinking the same thing. 
There, there were three different guys, and you're like, how did you not pick that off? It went right through him. And surprised that Collins <laughs> wasn't screened in some way, but he was right there to make the grab. But out of bounds, so it's third and ten. Spartans with a big defensive stand needed right here. Fails, rolls out to the right, throws it on the run. Pass is caught by Blend, makes for the first down marker. It's close. He's knocked out of bounds. They say he is short. Knocked out at the 48-yard line. He needed to get to the 49. They're up 13-7 on the Spartans. 11.50 to go. They'll send the punting unit on. Coming out to punt this one away, Stephen Amick. And Dan Cronin will set up back at his own 15-yard line. So the defense holds on that last play, leaving the Bison a yard short. Amick gets the punt away, low liner. It'll be caught back at the 13-yard line. Cronin back out to the 20 and tackled right there. That was a nice kick. Case will come out, take over at their own 20-yard line. That was a return of about seven yards. 39-yard punt. And it's first and 10. Spartans down by six with 11.22 to go. That's been a pretty evenly balanced attack for Bethany so far. 67 yards through the air. They've run the ball for 115 yards. They've had a number of different guys take carries in this one. Hill leads the way with 10 for 52 on the ground. Holmes with six for 29. 13 to 7 Bethany Spartans offense back out on the field Billy Beecher with DeFrancesco in motion now eight on the play clock Beecher calls out a new set of signals high snap Billy brings it down has it gets rid of it looking for Hockman and throws it out of bounds so Beecher gets rid of that football Hockman in the neighborhood but a high snap almost a disaster Beecher one arms it as it started to sail over his head Spartans have been flirting with disaster tonight. They scored on their first drive. They have been held in check offensively since then by the Bison defensive unit. By the way, I've not seen if Potier is back in. He was shaken up earlier. Beecher will run it outside the numbers on the left over near the sideline on the Bethany side, and he slides out of bounds. Out to close to the 39-yard line. That's a pickup of close to 18. It's a Spartans first down. And just scanning out there right now, I do not see Potier in the lineup for the Bison. He was shaken up earlier and walked off under his own power. But uh, their leading tackler, yep, I do see him. He's back in. So that is uh, good to see if you're a Bison's fan who uh, was uh, fearing losing one of their top defensive threats. Now a pass caught by Lapsevic as he finds the seam on the right and jogs out of bounds right at midfield. A pickup of 14, Beecher to Sean Lapsevic. Great to see him become part of this offense and hopefully Beecher can look his direction more frequently. He's such a big threat for Case. Well, DeFrancesco and Lapsevic lined up on the left. Lapsevic in a slot. Hotman and Bianco in the backfield. Bianco gets the hand off and bounces to the right, but he is wiped out as he gets to about the 49-yard line defensively for the Bison. Eric Campbell, the junior out of Hurricane, West Virginia, makes the tackle, second down and eight after a pickup of two. Case operating in Bethany territory. 48 yards from the end zone, 13 to seven Bison, 10.05 to play second quarter. Beecher to throw it, caught by Lynch, catch and run to the 40, drops the football, Case got it. Ball was poked away from Brendan Lynch and Case came up with the recovery. Luckily that ball bounced right to Joe Brucker. It was a great strip by this free safety, Dion Williams. And you could see it kind of in his body language he was frustrated. He really felt like he made the good play, and uh, I, I think you put it as well as you could. Brucker was as fortuitous as he could have been. That ball bounced right up into him. It's now third and short again. Case 0 for 4 on third downs today. Third and inches from the 41-yard line of the Bison. Beecher under center. He takes the snap, pushes straight ahead. Looks like he got it. 
George DeRaney helping from behind. Bianco was there as well. Trying to push Beecher on ahead. He got a yard. And the Spartans will have a new set of plays as they convert on third and one. Well, he needed the help from the running backs behind him pushing him forward because Bethany won the battle at the line of scrimmage. But unfortunately uh, for the Bison, they'll back up. A little too much muscle there for Case. Nick Greer right in the middle of that defensive line, six feet 240. Did his part, but the Spartans able to get the much needed yardage for a first down. First and 10 from the Bethany 39, 8.50 to go. Here in the second quarter, and there's another high snap. Beecher has it, though. Guns it downfield, passes incomplete. And again, right there, Deion Williams close to picking that ball off. But another lucky bounce, Brendan, for Case as that one came right back to Billy Beecher, and he's able to throw it away. I mean, Spartan fans have to have their hearts in their throat right now. This is unbelievable how, how unbelievably fortunate they've been here in the first half. It's still down six, got to capitalize. 13-7, Bethany, 8.50 to go here in the second quarter. The light's starting to take more effect now, but still quite bright here at DeSanto Field in the Case Western Reserve Campus. Pack action tonight between the Spartans and the Bison. Beecher, a quick out to Lynch, makes the catch, but then he is thrown to the turf. Well, that was okay. It was a free play because Bethany was offsides. There was a flag thrown on the far side. And with the offside, hey, you, you know, you might as well give it a shot. I'm just surprised Beecher didn't try to take a shot downfield. They were jumping on the right side of the Bethany line, and that is uh, what drew the flag. So they will walk this one off, and the ball will be placed at the 34-yard line. The Spartans moving the ball downfield, down by six, 13 to seven. Bison scored on a touchdown run in their last possession by Brandon Hill, but missed the extra point. And so a six-point ball game right now. Second quarter, 8.30 to go. Beecher will run it. Looks ahead. Had a hole open just briefly, but then Donovan Hayden, the linebacker, comes up to fill it and lays a hit on Beecher. He picks up two, but another third down now. We'll call it a long three for the Spartans, who trail 13-7. Spartans in there. Home grays. The uh, new navy and gray color scheme has been very well received. Hockman is in at fullback on the right hip of Beecher. A four receiver set. Lapsevic in motion. Another high snap. Beecher brought it down and got back maybe to the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard. And Case again looking at a fourth down. And Greg Debelak is going to take a timeout. So uh, Greg Debelak wants to talk things over here. Uh, the Spartans, again, uh, Brennan having some trouble with that exchange between Gage Blair and Billy Beecher. Yeah, and that's the frustrating part because in lots of different areas where things can go wrong, that seems to be one that, you know, through practice and practice and practice shouldn't be an issue. And, uh, you know, when you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot, on any given offensive play before the play even really has a chance to develop, you can't really expect much out of your offense. So I don't know what Gage Blair and Billy Beecher got to do to try to get this on uh, on rhythm. You know, I, I guess if, and, and I don't mean to pin one guy or the other, I guess if right, right now you look at it, it's probably more on Blair than on Beecher because he's been in the gun, but maybe Beecher has not been, you know, clear on his calls. Whatever the case is, this has to stop soon. Well, something they'll definitely talk about on the sideline, but the Spartans are going to go for it now on fourth down and four. Fourth and four from the Bethany 33-yard line. Beecher stands in the pocket. Now he's in trouble, feels the pressure, fires it downfield, incomplete. Well, the intense pressure coming from Khalid Pierce, the sophomore defensive end out of Youngstown, and chased Beecher away. And the Bison will take over on downs. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Dave's Cosmic Subs. Great for any sporting event. Make your game day experience complete by having some Dave's Subs with friends while watching your favorite team win. Voted the best in Cleveland. 
Come to Dave's Cosmic Subs in Coventry to check out what everyone is raving about. If you don't feel like going out, you can call for delivery, 216-320-0330. And Dave's legendary subs will be delivered right to your door. We appreciate the fine sponsorship of Spartans Athletics from Dave's Cosmic Subs. Hill has the football running backwards after getting hit initially and drives his legs for four extra yards. A nice first down run by Hill. And it is second down and four. Football at the 39-yard line. They'll hand it to Hill again. Breaks to the outside. Has some daylight across midfield. And out near the 40-yard line in Spartans territory. Well, that one's going to go for about 19 yards. So Hill with two nice runs gets all the way to the Spartan 41-yard line. He already has two touchdown runs on the night. They're working the no huddle. Hill gets the handoff again, spins down near the 40. About three Spartans bring him down. And that's what they're going to have to do right now, Brendan, to slow him down. Well, that last play got off 17 seconds after the out of bounds, and I think that was because the lineman had to take an extra three seconds to run up field. Now they are wasting no time between plays, and that has been a problem for Case trying to match up defensively. Vails out to Blinn. He's dangerous after the catch. Holds on to the football. Spartans trying to rip it loose. And Blinn gets down to the 38-yard line, a pickup of two on that little screen pass. You wonder if they might intentionally try to slow down a little bit here just to kill some clock. They've got the football and the lead. They're going to have the football to start the second half. If they could find a way to get points on this drive, that would certainly bode well for their uh, their ability to win their fourth straight. 13-7. to seven. They lead the Spartans right now by six. They've been moving the ball with authority. Blinn in motion to the right. Vails back to throw. Goes middle of the field for Collins, and the pass is caught. Down close to the 16-yard line. Spartans get defensive coverage from Cody Calhoun, the strong safety, who makes the tackle, but not before a big gain and a first down. Football at the 17-yard line. Vails handles a low snap. Gets it to Blinn. He is knocked down. As Mike O'Donnell battling a case of turf toe during the week, he comes in to make the stop. There will be no rest for the Spartans. Second down and 12. Football at the 19-yard line. Bison have it. Jalen Holmes is checked in at tailback. And a flag is thrown. And let's see what the infraction is. Illegal procedure against the Bison. I'm not sure what they did there to elicit the flag. Well, it was ruled against uh, running back Jalen Holmes. He was pretty obvious in throwing his arms out to the side to say, hey, what did I do? <laughs> I think he saw it the same way you did. Well, they mark off five, second down and 17. From the 24-yard line, Vale's in trouble, and they got him. He goes down. Sack recorded by the Spartans. Everett DeShong in there with Dayton Snyder. It'll be DeShong getting credit for the sack. And that comes at a very timely juncture. That is DeShong's fourth sack of the season. Well, brings up third down and 23. The clock continuing to tick away, but Bethany without a particularly strong kicker likely in four down territory, especially going into the win. One field goal on the season so far. They'll dump it out to Hill. He has some running room in front. They try to set up the blocking, but Case gets to him. So Hill catches the screen pass, but he is tackled before he can get anywhere close to the first down marker. K.J. Peterson in there to wipe him out, and it's fourth down and 20 with the football marked at the 27-yard line of the Spartans. So decision time here for Bill Garvey on whether to go for it or try a long field goal. This would be a 44-yarder if they elected to try it now. The long on the season of 25 by their place kicker, Chris Ray, and they may talk it over here. So a timeout's going to be taken by Bethany. We'll take one as well. 3.46 to go here in the first half of play at DeSanto Field. Case Western Reserve 
trailing Bethany 13 to 7. Back with more after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations well no doubt about it in years past Greg Debelak when he has had the personnel he has terrorized opponents with that hurry up no huddle offense and Bethany using that against the Spartans tonight 13 to 7 the Bison leading it 346 remaining here in the second quarter David Wilson along with Brendan Gulick and our case Western Reserve Media Vision crew bringing you Spartans football tonight. And they are going to go for it. Fourth down and 20. Vails back to throw. Has time in the pocket. Goes for blend. Deep downfield. Makes the catch. Shakes a tackle. Now let's see if he got the first down yardage. The Spartans come in waves to knock him down. Mike O'Donnell was there and got plenty of help. And it looks like they held him behind the first down marker, Blinn giving it a look. What was he doing? Why did Blinn not just run straight ahead? He was trying to avoid contact, but he cost himself the first down. Looks like the Spartans will take over, and that uh, play <laughs> ended up just uh, maybe a yard short, Brendan. But once he got away from the initial contact, took a couple of steps back, before turning it upfield, it ended up just short of the first down, and Case will take over on the eight-yard line. Well, they narrowly missed converting on fourth and 20. I'm Billy Beecher takes the snap, stands in the pocket, downfield, four laps, seven, just a little bit short. Second down and 10 coming up from the eight. I was just going to say I'm dumbfounded. I, I can't believe he didn't put his head down and try to pick up that yard. But the Spartans won't complain about it. They get the ball back, and uh, they would certainly like to retain possession here for the rest of the first half if they can. They have to be careful here, operating deep in their own territory. 3.30 to go. Here's another flag. And we'll see if this goes against the Spartans. If it does, they'll be backed up to the three. And do we have a timeout? Wow. Like I think they were case gonna, timeout. I think they were going to have a substitution infraction, but instead got the timeout off first. So they saved themselves the penalty, which would have backed them up four yards. But uh, with 3.30 left in the half, case down to just one timeout now. Well, Brendan, you look back at the two bad snaps that uh, both were saved by Billy Beecher, the near pick six, the fumble that was recovered, and then the fourth and 20 that was almost converted. Case living a charmed life here in the first half despite <laughs> being down six points. It could be much worse if any of those had turned in to true turnovers. And they were up seven nothing with less than three minutes having already gone by in the first quarter. So ever since that touchdown drive, things have not been pretty for the Spartans, but they are right in the thick of it. Second down and 10. From the eight yard line, Case Western Reserve with the ball. They'll hand it up the middle. I believe that was Bianco trying to carry the football. They never, re no, that's Hotman, I believe. Let's double check that. Maybe Kanganelli. So a third time's the charm here. Kanganelli, the ball carrier, got out to, to the nine yard line. So third and nine now for the Spartans, working from their own nine. They need to get out to the 18-yard line for a first down. Kanganelli stays in at tailback to the left of Billy Beecher. Four receivers set. They'll go up the middle. Kanganelli looking for a hole there and is wrapped up as he gets across the 10, maybe out close to the 12-yard line. And Nadeem Radar right there just flying off that left defensive end and blasted into him in the backfield. And now the Bison, as you'd probably expect, take one of their final two timeouts to stop the clock with 2.51 left. Probably be looking at getting the football at about midfield. Kanganelli 
Seeing some action in the backfield for the Spartans. The freshman out of Mayfield High School. The Wildcats had a big win against previously undefeated Solon earlier this week. Good for them. Larry Pinto, one of the fine high school coaches in the area. Some good high school football games last night. I think Midview went to 6-0, a team out on the west side. They're playing well. They've had a great run the last couple of years, the middies. 13-7 here, Bethany leading it. And Cannon will punt from his own goal line. Crucial execution needed here, the kick is on its way. Let's see if it takes a case bounce. It does out across midfield. It's going to go out of bounds out uh, near the 42 yard line. So that will be a kick of about 40 yards. And the Spartans will come out defensively and try and hold here the final 242 of the half. Well, the way Bethany has run their offense tonight, two minutes and 42 seconds, they could have about three possessions. <laughs> They have run the hurry up from start to where we are right now. 2.42 to go in the first half of play. 13 to 7. Bison's leading the Spartans here at DeSanto Field. First meeting between these two schools since the early days of Case's uh, participation in the President's Athletic Conference. Last meeting, 1983. First play from scrimmage, pass play incomplete. Out on the right. Well, Case able to break that up. Second down and 10 from the 43-yard line of the Bison. Four receiver set for Vales. Hill is, uh, Holmes make it in the backfield, trying to block for Vales and across the middle intended for Collins. And the pass is broken up by Aaron Weisberg, incomplete. Well, now a decision. Do you try to run off some clock and maybe force Case to use their last timeout? Or do you try to pick up the first down on third and ten after throwing a couple of incomplete passes? Now Bale's looking over to the sideline. Bill Garvey is his own offensive coordinator. He's in his second season as head coach at Bethany. Spent the previous seven as the offensive coordinator for the Bison. Bale's back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. Snyder trailing him. Now Bale's trying to run it. Gets to midfield. Dives ahead. Gets close to the first down marker, which is at the 47-yard line. He's very close. They'll give this a look. I think he's a little bit short, Brendan. So again, scrambling around there. He had Snyder on his back. But Vales outran him and got to the 48-yard line, but one yard short. And they will send Amick back out to punt in case should get the ball back with 150 and change to go here in the second quarter. Well, the Bison out there and, and they're waiting to approach the line of scrimmage. Case gets the punt unit out there quickly. Don't have much time to get this off. Now one on the play clock. They did get the snap away. Amick with a high kick and a fair catch called for and a diving grab on the fair catch. Case securing that one. That was uh, Cronin on the fair catch. Spartans come back out. They'll take the football at the 24-yard line. Actually, I think it was Owen Williams, a sophomore cornerback. First time we've seen him go back for a punt here this evening. So the football at the 19. A 29-yard punt and the fair catch called for by Case. So Beecher with 94 seconds left in the half. He takes the snap, rolls to the left, and the pass is batted down incomplete. I believe that might have been Potier back in there. Yeah, he did get his paws on it and tipped it up into the air, and everybody was kind of holding their breath as the ball hung in suspension. But no one came down with it before it hit the turf. Okay, scored on their first possession tonight but has uh, not been able to threaten the end zone since. 13 to seven Bison, 130 to go, second down and 10, Case Western Reserve on their own 19 yard line. Beecher back to throw, pressure coming, rolls to the right, he's in trouble and he is out of bounds. Shoved out of bounds over there. And again, there is Nadim Radar, the defensive end out of 
Laurel, Maryland, who chased him out of bounds. And Beecher lost a couple of yards, third down and 12. The football now marked at the Spartans 17 yard line. Well, and the clock stopped with him going out of bounds, so still 124 left in the half. Each team with one timeout. Beecher stands in the pocket. Good protection. Now it starts to break down. Billy running for it, but he'll go down in a heap. And there is Radar again. That's his eighth sack of the season. So a big defensive stand here by the Bison. And they should get the ball back now. Case looking at a fourth down. That one marked back to the 14-yard line. And it looks like a timeout taken here by Bethany. There was also a hold on Case okay. on the play that was declined. So they'll uh, so Bethany will take one of their last two timeouts. Or, or do they just have one left and they haven't taken it off the board? I think they only had one left, didn't they? I believe they had only one left. That should be it for the yep. Bison. There's the zero up now. 116 to go. And so they do wisely decline that penalty. And Case looking now at a fourth down and 15 from the 14-yard line. Well, crucial that they get off a good punt here. It has been a trying first half ever since what was a great opening drive for the Spartans. They, they really haven't done anything offensively since. Collins and Blinn back deep to receive this punt from Cannon. And again, standing at the goal line. Line of scrimmage is the 14-yard line. They get the punt away. Low line drive caught by Blinn at the 45-yard line, middle of the field, 50, down to the 48-yard line, and tackled by the Spartans. <laughs> and so they will start in Spartans territory with 1.05 to go before halftime. When you talk about low line drive, hang time on that punt was barely over a second. I mean, he just sort of... It kind of looked like a pass flying through the air the way it spiraled and kind of stayed low into the uh, with the wind at its back and carried it. But hey, Bethany's got a shot here. They're 47 yards away from the end zone. Again, we we know they don't have a strong kicking game, but we also know they can strike pretty quickly. That was a 46 yard punt and about a 12 yard return by Blinn. So now the Spartans will try and hold defensively and keep the deficit at six. Fails to Blinn. Catches it at the 40, breaks outside the numbers, and heads right out of bounds with Nick Kwan on his back. Yeah, Kwan was kind of soft on the coverage. He was giving him a good six or seven yards at the line of scrimmage and just sort of got caught backpedaling on that slant back toward the middle. Hurry up still in effect at the 39-yard line of the Spartans. They'll go for the sideline again, and this time it's Collins. Boy, that one-two punch in the receiving core of Blinn and Collins. Very tough to defend, and they pick up the first down. First and 10, the football now at the 36-yard line. Back to throw, Bales goes middle of the field. Blinn has the catch in open territory in between the hash marks. Now out to the left, gets down to the 10, and he is down. The football popped loose at the last second, but it's a 26-yard pickup for the Bison. Well, Quan made the touchdown saving tackle after it looked like Blinn would run away with it. Bales gets it to Blinn again. They like the catch and run. And a little crossing route. He gets out near the hash mark, makes the grab. And it's going to be second and goal. And Blinn is slow getting up after taking a shot after that catch. And he is flat on his back right now. But he is lethal when making the catch and having any kind of space to run. But right now he is injured after a three yard pickup, leaving it at second and goal. Well, they look like they're feeling his rib cage on the left hand side. I wonder, you know, if. if well, he's up now, well, I, appears to be OK. He's trying, trying to hear the official. I'm not exactly sure what he was uh, saying. Oh, you know what? There's a 10-second runoff because there's no timeout for Bethany and there was an injury. 
That, okay. So that makes a little more sense. But I was just thinking, hey, you know, it kind of looks cold outside. We know it's cold. But you get that wind howling, and it's, you know, a yeah. good 40 degrees. I wonder how much of that was just, you know, it took a, took a good solid shot in cold weather. 46 degrees at kickoff and probably dropping. 21 seconds left. Now the pass batted down, but it's caught. And it's caught by Hill, I believe, or did he drop the pass? Incomplete. That one almost came down after being deflected at the line of scrimmage into the waiting hands of their running back, Brandon Hill, but dropped. And now with 12 seconds left, it is third and goal from the seven-yard line. Well, the only saving grace there for Bethany is that the clock stopped because it's now down to 12 seconds after that 10-second runoff two plays ago. Well, you figured time to run a play here and then get your field goal unit on, but they do have no timeouts here, so they would have to do it very quickly if they are not able to get the clock stopped. Vales will try and run it for the end zone. He's close. He's hit and knocked down by Aaron Weisberg at about the two-yard line. They will try and run one more play, and they will not get it off. That's the end of the first half. The Spartans hold at the goal line to keep this a six-point ball game. 